The Christian Bible is made up of two sections, the Old and the New Testaments. The New Testament, which begins with the four Gospels, has 27 books in total. The Old Testament, the focus of my message today, includes 39 books written mostly in Hebrew by authors inspired by the Holy Spirit over a period of a thousand years, ending around 400 BC. The Old Testament can be summarized in nine historical periods, beginning with the creation and fall period, during which God created the heavens and the earth and all living things, including men and women, who were created in his image. God placed the first man and woman, Adam and Eve, in the Garden of Eden, a perfect place for him to walk and spend time with them. God's only command was that Adam and Eve not eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Unfortunately, they disobeyed God's command, allowing sin to enter the world, and were therefore banished from the Garden of Eden forever. The Abraham and sons period is when God chose his people. The first person chosen was Abram, who later became Abraham. God made a covenant with Abraham to make his descendants into a great nation, even though Abraham and his wife Sarah were old and unable to conceive. Abraham believed God, but he eventually grew impatient and had a son Ishmael with his wife's servant, Agar. Later, however, Sarah did bear Abraham two sons, Isaac and Jacob, according to God's promise. These three men, Abraham and his two sons, would become known as the patriarchs, and God's chosen people through Jacob would be given the name Israel. During the Moses and Exodus period, the Hebrew slaves were under Egyptian authority for 400 years. The Hebrews called out to God and he heard their cry, sending Moses as his messenger to tell Pharaoh to let his people go. It took 10 plagues, ending with the death of each firstborn of Egyptian families for Pharaoh to finally let the Hebrews leave Egypt. God parted the Red Sea and let his people out of Egypt in miraculous fashion, but not long after they feared for their safety and wanted to return. At Mount Sinai, God gave Moses 10 commandments that his people were to follow. Yet those same people God saved chose to worship a golden idol. For this, they spent 400 years wandering in the desert, and those originally freed from Egypt, including Moses, would never enter the Promised Land. Next came the Joshua and Conquest period, in which Joshua led God's people into the Promised Land, a beautiful land flowing of milk and honey. Over the next seven years, God gave his people the power to conquer those that inhabited the land. Yet even with that power, the people did not conquer all the Canaanites. Those left alive worshiped idols and even married some of the Hebrew people who were turning their backs on God and their covenant with him. During the Judges and Samuel period, Israel fell into a dreadful cycle. They would forget God's commands and commit idolatry, be conquered and fall under severe oppression then cry out to God who would send a judge or deliverer to save them. This cycle happened seven times, but each time God would save his people because of his mercy and his grace. During the time of David and Solomon, the prophet Samuel would anoint Saul, king of Israel. The Philistines and one of their soldiers, a giant named Goliath, posed a major threat to Israel under Saul's leadership. Until David, a young shepherd boy with extraordinary faith, killed the giant using only a slingshot. Later, Samuel would anoint David, king of Israel. David was a man after God's own heart, but he fell short as well when he committed adultery with Bathsheba and then had her husband killed in battle. Solomon, one of David's sons, was a man of peace and great wisdom. He built the temple in Jerusalem and wrote much of the book of Proverbs. The divided kingdom period after the death of King Solomon was a time of conflict between the 12 tribes of Israel. They divided into two groups, 10 of which retained the title of Israel while remaining two tribes became Judah. During this period, the prophet Isaiah warned God's people of an attack by the Assyrians due to their idolatry and foreign relationships. Although Isaiah was most known for his prophecy of the coming Messiah, he spoke more of the Messiah than any other prophet. The destruction of Israel and Judah is a period during which prophets spoke for God, warning the people of their rebellion against him. All the kings in the north were corrupt and wicked and forsook God's commandments. For this, they were defeated by the Assyrians. The people of Judah also rebelled against God and were defeated by the Babylonians under King Nebuchadnezzar. The final period, the return from captivity, saw the Persians conquer the Babylonians. It was a Persian tradition to allow those they conquered to return to their homeland, 
Even though only a small amount of Jewish people actually returned, they rebuilt their temple in Jerusalem. Many times during the Old Testament, God made covenants with his people to protect and to bless them. Yet time after time, God's people would rebel and even worship other gods and idols. God always kept his promise, though, and through his mercy and grace, saved his people. As prophesied by Isaiah in the Old Testament, God sent his son to the earth as a sinless man to live amongst the people. God's new and final covenant was that Jesus, his son, would suffer and die on a cross as a sacrifice for all of our sins, then rise after three days to fulfill the promise made in the Old Testament. The Old Testament tells us who God is and his promises for each of us. The New Testament fulfills those promises. The Bible is one complete book directing us to one thing, Jesus.